Now I am going to do brakes on this and I never did it before on this bike. I did it on my old 1200 that I had years ago. I don't even know how. It looks like I got two bolts down here to take off. Took those two off. Let's see if this just slides out of there or if there's more. There might be more. I didn't know about this. The fender comes apart. And look, there is another bolt. Right here. And I don't feel one on that side. So, I didn't know about that. Because I never had a 1500 before. It also holds the brake line in place. We'll be learning together on this one. I'm going to try to show why I knew that the brake pads were real thin. This part right here is the metal shoe, the backing, and the padding is between that and this, which is the rotor, disc rotor. So we just got a very thin amount of space there. Probably just have to show it when I get it out. Here's a new one. Padding is like twice as thick as the backing. A six millimeter up here on this one. This bracket that holds the caliper on. Let's see if this will come off for me. Mm, that was tight. And then we got a four and a half millimeter down here on the bottom. And I'm just doing this by what it looks like I need to do. I don't have a book for this bike, although I did download a shop manual on the, on the internet. And I don't know if I got the whole thing or not, I don't remember. I'm just trying to do this by what it looks like I need to do. And that's usually good enough on brakes. Got the caliper off, and as we can see in here, the brake shoes are really thin, and the padding is getting pretty thin in there. Not at the danger point. I could have made it this year with that, but we're ready to change them. I just hope that the ones they gave me are the right ones, but I did get them pretty cheap through Amazon. I'm going to be careful not to crack this brake line loose. We don't want any fluid coming out anywhere, but I am going to have to spread these shoes apart to get these new ones in there. That means I gotta stick something in between those shoes and push these pistons back down. Gotta do both, I gotta push, it's two pistons, so we gotta push both of them in at the same time. Or else if we just push one, if we take the shoes off and push one piston in, it's just gonna push the other one out. And it might come out too far and break the seal and then spray fluid out all over. Then we have to have a big mess to fix. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to find something to put in here, probably All two right, screwdrivers. Alright, I got two screwdrivers. I'm going to stick them both in here side by side and just pull them opposite directions and see if we can spread that apart in there. Look at there. It went. Now when you do that, even on a car, probably especially on a car, because a car has a tendency to hold more fluid and it'll spray fluid out of your master cylinder and all over the place if it's got too much in there. You don't want to fill up your master cylinder with brake fluid without checking your brake shoes and making sure that your shoes or pads are not needing to be changed. Looks like we've got pins to pull out. Okay, we got retaining pins that hold them in. I forgot about that. I haven't done brakes on a motorcycle in a long time. Well, they used to just have a pin with a little, um, had a long pin with just a, a little cotter, like a cotter pin or a, a spring 
uh, pin on the end of it. This has a screwdriver slot. I don't know what I'm going to find. Maybe that just unscrews out of there. Well, that's just a cap. There's another Allen wrench hole in there. Looks like our four and a half will fit it. Yeah, the pin's coming out. Very similar to cars. GM cars have a pin like that on the front brakes, but they don't have a cap like these. But I like that cap idea. That helps keep the threaded par portion clean. I got my little TV monitor hooked up to it now so I can kind of look up there at the monitor and see what's on the screen today. Make sure we're getting the same brake shoe in there. These new brake shoes are real close to identical and they should work. I don't see any reason why they won't work. The only difference is the one I'm taking off has some extra little cuts in it. The new one only has one cut in the middle. And then I wondered, well since this is only the hand brake and the other side of the wheel is the foot brake as well as the back wheel the foot brake and so this package here that they sent with the whole set has these extra grooves in it and so I thought I'm going to check and make sure well when I match this shoe up with those it does not want to match up the same it's not the same shape it's real close and it might even fit but it is different enough then I'm not going to use it. I'm going to save this. It probably fits the back brakes. Well, the back brakes are in good shape. They'll probably last as long as I'll have the bike. But anyway, I'm going to go on ahead and put these in. I just wanted to double check. I shouldn't have to remind anybody. Make sure you put the padded side towards the middle. Don't put it in like that steel side goes against the pistons. Yeah, and while you're looking at it, look and see are the pistons. Do you see any sign of seepage or oil? I don't see any. That's a good sign. And I didn't have any trouble pushing them back with the screwdrivers. They went right back like they should. So I got to push with my thumb, pushing in against that spring that's in there. Did I show you the spring that's in there? It's just a steel flat spring on the inside it goes all the way across. Got to push the pin halfway in because we got to put the other shoe in there. And now I'm going to put this pin in too. Halfway in. There's the points of the pin. I don't know if you can see them in there. What is my phone doing making noises? Never made that noise before. Okay, so we got both of those back in there. I'm just I'm ready to tighten these back down now. There may be a better, easier, more proper way of doing this. I'm learning it as I go, just applying what I've been doing for uh, many, many years on cars to this. And as long as I don't run into a snag, I'm not going to stop and try to find out if there's a better way. So far, it's working I pretty easy. I just found out there's a bearing. I knew there'd be a bushing here, and I thought, that looks like a bearing. 
and I pulled that bushing out and looked in there and sure enough there's a bearing a set of roller bearings in there look at that why would they have roller bearings there all this does it, it pivots ever so slightly bushing is more than enough I mean just a bolt is probably enough it's odd to me it's odd anyway I probably should put a little grease on that where I put this together because it's got grease on it. I found a little drop of red grease on my grease gun. I'll just uh, put that on there. seeing something a little different down here this little tiny circular spring clip just fell off of here this this little thing was sitting in kind of an oblong hole and I wondered is, is that thing wore out is something wrong with that so I moved this around a little bit and then that little spring clip fell off of it. I'm going to clean this up and uh, check this out a little bit. This might get greased and put back in there. Probably not in the picture. Sorry about that. I'm going to look into this a little bit and see if, if this is all okay. I'm not sure what this is. There is a plastic bushing in there, and I don't know if it's designed to be slightly oblong or not. It might be. Because um, this, this whole unit here may have something to do with, uh, with like nose diving. If it nose dives or hard braking or something, it might move this, might be some kind of a trigger to change something, to change the stiffening of the shocks maybe. I don't know what that is. I'm going to put it back together like it was and, um, and just go with it because it was running fine and I don't have time to spend hours and hours looking into that just to finish the video we're just doing breaks i don't know what this is but maybe someone knows and will tell me what that is but as for now just put it on like that and I'm ready to start putting this thing back together looks like I gotta spread these brake shoes out a little bit more I can see the politically correct comments already complaining about me sticking two forks in here and taking a chance on bruising I mean two screwdrivers in here and bruising the um, surface on the brake shoes well it'd be all right be better than it was yeah I am curious as to what's in this little design here with this thing at the bottom of the shock and that little deal they had in there, that was kind of odd looking. Sorry, I'm still zoomed in.
Now I'm going to squeeze the brake. I can't tell if it's flexing or not. Feels good, feels normal. I think we're ready to just put it back together. That would be the end of the brake job. I, I would go ahead and put the wheel cover back on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do something. This could be a separate video, but I, I'm going to see if I can't polish up this aluminum wheel some.